Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.2 Beta 4. iOS 18.2 Beta 4 is available to developers, and iOS 18.2 Public Beta 3 should be out soon. This is available to all iOS 18 supported devices, even if it doesn't support Apple Intelligence, and it came in at 788.5 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. This was released alongside many other updates, with iPadOS 18.2 Beta 4, macOS 15.2 Beta 4, watchOS 11.2 Beta 3 with a major fix, and a few other updates, and the other day, tvOS, HomePodOS, and VisionOS Beta updates as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 22C5142A. This is the first time we've seen an A at the end of the build number, meaning we're getting close to a final release. Now it may be a few weeks. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. But the first thing to know about this update is there is no modem update, but there are some new features. The first new feature actually has to do with settings. If we go into settings, we scroll all the way to the bottom and go to apps. At the top now we have two different things. Default apps, and I actually have app installation, although I know not everyone has this. If we go into default apps, we can then select default apps for email, messaging, calling, call filtering, browser, passwords and codes, contactless app, and keyboards. For example, you'll see your normal keyboard layout here. Under contactless app, you could select your wallet or something else that uses NFC. We also have the option for passwords and codes, so maybe you want to use Microsoft's Authenticator or Chrome or something else, you can select those. You also have the option, of course, for a browser with Chrome or Arc Search as your default. We've had that for a while. And then also call filtering, calling if you have a different phone option, as well as messaging, which there are no additional options, even though I have different messaging apps installed, and then email, of course. So you could select between those if you want to make those your default. And on the main page here, we have app installation as well, where we just have our automatic download options with offload unused apps and more. And it's allowed for web installation with the Alt Store. However, the Alt Store will not allow me to install it yet in the United States. If we go over here and we take a look in the app library, I try to download the Alt Store, it doesn't work. It just sort of fails and won't let me use it. But it is an option that we may see in the near future in the United States. Something else that also goes along with this, if we go back to the main page here, and then we go to search, under our search options, we now have an option for search engine. So before we had this with things such as Safari, but now we can select a default search engine under the main search of iOS. So Yahoo, Bing, DuckDuckGo, or Ecosia. So maybe they'll add some additional ones in the future, but if you wanna change this up when maybe you're searching, then you can bring it up. So if you want DuckDuckGo results for maybe, let's try Ferrari, or maybe Jaguar with their new ad. Not the same thing, but you get the idea. So it's going to suggest different things. If we search for it, then it will bring us into DuckDuckGo. Now within our apps, not only do we have default app options, but we now have options within those specific apps as well. For example, if we go down to messages, so if we find messages here, and within messages, you'll see that we have a couple things here with default messaging app. So we could change this where it says messages will be used to compose new messages. If you have multiple messaging apps, you can change the default. There's no options here yet for me, but there is a new option here for sensitive content warning. This is something we've heard a lot about that we were hearing would be added, and it says detect photos and videos before they are viewed on your iPhone. They could be explicit, of course, and receive guidance to help make a safe choice. Apple does not have access to the photos or videos. So if you want it to warn you about that, enable it, and then you can actually enable it for different services as well, such as airdrop, contacts, messages, and video messages as well. It will detect that and help you make a determination as to whether or not you want to view it. If we go back into the same sort of settings, but this time for mail, of course, we have the same thing with default mail app. And you'll see we have the option here, just like we do in the other page. If we go into mail itself, the icons that show up next to the different companies, such as EA or Bose, actually are rounded now. In the previous update, they were squared off, and now they look a little bit better. So that's just a slight update here. Within the fitness app, there's an update for awards. Under awards, we now have some new ones for all rings closed. So these are new awards you can actually win, and they're based on 100 all rings closed and more. So as you scroll through, you'll see more and more of those as you try and earn those different awards as they've been updated. 
Now, Apple intelligence gets a small update that looks like it's making some different choices when using image playground. If you have this enabled, you'll see the top images here, the top three I actually made with the latest version. It actually portrays me differently with the same exact photo. So this is some that it did before. Then if we go up, it looks a little bit different. There are similarities, but the overall model is a little bit different. And I actually typed the same thing for this image here and the one in the upper left. So that gives you an idea. If you want to create something, you could just pick here, show more, maybe at a party with fireworks and maybe a birthday. And then we'll give it a second to create this. And there we go. So it continues to create this very differently than what I saw before. I don't know that I like it that much, but it gives me very different looks and they continue to update the overall image modeling that's going on in the background with it. The same is true in messages. So if we go into the emoji keyboard, go to create a gen emoji, how about a smiling icon with a hat and big eyes? Let's see what it does here. And some descriptions may create unexpected results. You'll see it there. So same model looks like it's been updated. And then of course you can just add this and then use it within your messages or wherever you'd like. Now, something they haven't updated yet is if we go back into our settings here, we go back into accessibility under accessibility, we have the new camera control option, but they haven't updated the icon just yet. So we're waiting for them to do that. And we've heard different rumors that we're actually going to have the option to when it's finally charging to show us that it's charging and give us a time remaining. So if I go ahead and plug it in here, this is something we may see in the future, but if we plug it in like this, then I lock the phone. It doesn't give me any information. I'm not sure why. Hopefully they'll add this in the future. And within Apple's public facing release website, you can see the release notes here where they continue to work on this with beta form and they've resolved issues with the AV foundation. There's still some known issues with chat GPT integration. For example, for devices with MDM profiles, users with anonymous restrictions are unable to sign out. And the workaround is use the chat GPT restriction instead of the chat GPT anonymous only restriction. Find my, they've resolved an issue where playing a sound and precision finding features of air tags, AirPods, and third party find my enabled accessories might not work. That should work. Now there's some known issues with messages still where messages might not appear. That's been around for a while. And there's known issues with stickers still where they might not appear in the emoji keyboard. The workaround is to use a numeric passcode instead of an alphanumeric one, change to numeric passcode, then restart your device. That should fix the bug that many are experiencing. And I'm thankfully not seeing that bug. There are other known issues here as well. But if we go back into messages, Within messages, if we go to the emoji keyboard, this was fixed with me for me with beta three and hasn't returned since. But if you are having an issue that at least gives you a workaround for it to fix the problem. As far as other things they've fixed, well, some great news is with Apple Watch. The great news is with watchOS 11.2 beta three, Apple fixed the battery health bug. With beta two, it reduced the battery health on the new Apple Watch Ultra. For me, it actually dropped down to 95%, but it looks like they've resolved it now. If we go down to battery, go to battery, battery health, we'll scroll down. And you'll see here that it's back up to 100%. So it was at 100%. It's only about a month or so old. And then it dropped to 95. Some people dropped down to 90 and many people were concerned with beta two, but that's the bugs that you get in beta sometimes. So it looks like they've resolved that issue. They've also resolved an issue with mail notifications. It seems if I turn off, do not disturb, you'll see here that mail has notifications again. So this is great news. It's actually working properly now. Also stickers are showing back up for some in messages, but again, there's a workaround for that. I've also had some touch responsiveness issues. So just going throughout apps, maybe that's because it just installed the update and was processing in the background, but it was giving me some issues as far as overall storage. Well, storage shouldn't be too much of a concern, but let's go ahead and take a look at that. As many people ask me to take a look at it, we'll go into iPhone storage. There it is. Let's go ahead and take a look. And at the bottom, you'll see system data is 7.45 gigabytes. This can go up and down as it's used as cache data, but iOS is 11. 
3.99 gigabytes with Apple intelligence coming in at 3.18 gigabytes. So it looks like it increased in size. Maybe it has some more processing in the background. We'll have to see if this goes down at all, but it does look like it's using a little bit more storage than before. But again, if you have a lot of cache storage, this can clear itself up. So just give it some time. Now, when it comes to releases, we're not sure if we're going to get another release next week as it's Thanksgiving on Thursday in the United States next week. So it's possible we could have a release anywhere between Monday and Wednesday. However, we might skip that week and then have an RC on the 2nd, 3rd or 4th of December with a public release on the 9th. Now, there's some conflicting information I've talked about before where Mac Rumors has said the 9th, Mark Gurman has said the 2nd, if everything goes right. So we could see it very soon. If we get an update early next week, well, then we'll know for sure. But that's what we're expecting so far. And then we'll move on to iOS 18.3 probably with beta one and probably have beta one or maybe beta two before the holiday season. And then typically nothing until about mid January. So we'll have a little bit of a dry season there with releases and we'll have to wait and see what they do with that. When it comes to overall performance, it seems super smooth. I've had a few people message me already saying the same thing. And on the iPhone 11, I had some initial issues installing it as I installed it using a computer. Some things weren't signed yet. It seemed so I had to reinstall it, but it was fine after I did that. And so far it's super smooth. So everything is responding as you would expect, nice and smooth with ProMotion and then regular 60 Hertz on the iPhone 11 going into applications and more. And I'll show you that with benchmarks in just a moment. When it comes to the overall heat of the device, well, if you use Apple intelligence, it will warm up a little bit, but it's staying nice and cool in general. It's a little bit warm to the touch, but I think that's probably because it's processing a lot in the background. And typically we can see that if we go into settings and take a look at battery, if we go into battery, battery health and charging, I'm at 54 cycles with 100% capacity. You'll see here, it says update finishing in the background. So this is definitely still processing. So I'm glad that they include that message. If we go to the last 10 days, beta three was pretty terrible on battery, two hours and 57 minutes of screen active time, six hours and two minutes of screen idle time. And I use 75% of my battery. So that's pretty much what I was getting three to four hours. And then I would have to charge. Hopefully this fixes it. We'll have to give it a few days and we'll talk about that on Saturday with the weekend follow-up video. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.2 beta four, well, if you're on iOS 18.1.1 that released yesterday, I would probably hold off, stay on the stable release for now. If you're trying to solve any issues, going to a beta typically won't do that. But if you're on beta three, I would definitely install it. And if you're on public beta two, wait for public beta three or install that. Otherwise I would probably hold off for now. As far as the overall benchmarks, I did run those, as I mentioned, and we're seeing really great scores on the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 16 pro max. So if we go back here, we'll go to the history. This is the wrong version go into here, you'll see on the iPhone 16 pro max, I had 3,429 for single core, 8,555 for multi-core. If we compare that with the history, that's much better for the multi-core about the same for single core. It's within the margin of error, but much better for multi-core overall. In fact, some of the highest I've ever seen as far as their scores, the same is true on the iPhone 11. So it's doing much better as far as that goes, just with general benchmarks. And so that's pretty much everything in iOS 18.2 beta four so far. If you found any additional features or changes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>